I felt hopeless. There was absolutely no joy that I could feel. In fact, I looked for dark places where I could curl up and hide by myself in a closet or in a dark corner of a bedroom. Ultimately, I was diagnosed with depression. And there's one thing that my therapist taught me that has really made a difference in staying ahead of it and helped me to pull out of that dark place. I'll explain that next. Hi, I'm Heidi Tucker, award-winning inspirational author and speaker. Welcome to The Pickled Sunflower, where we can come together in hope. Many years ago, I had a healthy baby girl. I had everything I wanted. I had a good job. I had this new baby. I'm in my first house, but I wasn't happy. About six weeks after the birth of that child, I began to plummet. Ultimately, I knew because I was diagnosed and I found a really good therapist that I was chronically depressed. I wanna tell you about one particular thing that my therapist told me to do every single day that really helped me to pull out of the vicious dark cycle that I was in and prevented me from falling even deeper. In those first signs of depression, we feel stuck, right? Our minds are just stuck. We, we feel dark. We feel very little emotion. The only emotion we can grab onto is sadness and despair. And so we sort of become an actor. We begin to act. We put this face on when we're in public that everything really is okay. Slowly begin to pull away, right? We pull away from family and from friends and from everybody that we love because it's just too hard to put that face on. There just is no joy in our life. Even the simplest things begin to be significant in our lives, right? Laundry is so hard. Doing the dishes, keeping a clean house, bathing. I mean, there's just some simple tasks that normally we don't think about that are in our ordinary routines and they become overwhelming. One of the things that I learned in therapy was that those negative thoughts are lies. They are not truthful because everything is negative that we're hearing in our mind. Our reality is off balanced and irrational. And so we need to do something to reverse that. Here's what I did. I took a pad of paper and I put a line right down the middle of it. And every time I had a negative thought, I was to write down what that negative thought was in the left side of that column. I would take a look at that statement and even though that's how I felt, I would force my mind to make it positive and I would write the opposite on the right-hand side of the paper. Pretty soon, I had an entire paper filled with negative thoughts on the left-hand side and positive thoughts on the right-hand side. Those positive thoughts felt very forced. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, hadn't, I couldn't feel those, but I was writing them down as a matter of an exercise. So one example just might be um, if I wrote down something like, I am unlovable and not worth anything because that's what I was hearing. On the right-hand side of the paper, I would force myself to write, my parents love me, my family loves me. Another example might be, you write down on the left-hand side a negative thought which you're feeling, which is, I feel like I can't do this anymore. And so I would take a look at that, and on the right-hand side, you might write something like, my family cares about me, I am seeking help, this will not be forever. Right? See, so you just take that and you put the positive spin on it, even though that's not what you're feeling. I know this seems really oversimplified, but I promise that it works. I saw it in my own life. I still continue to do that today. Why? Because it's important for me to stay one step ahead of depression because it's always sort of back there. It's thick in my family genes and I don't ever want to get down to that dark space that I was at that particular time in my life. Because I went through that practice so often when I was really, really struggling, now I do it automatically. If I hear that negative thought, I automatically put the positive spin on it. And I think that to myself. Sometimes I say it right out loud to myself, just to be sure that I get that. And it really works. It has helped me move forward in my life to do things that feel really hard and to not let those negative gremlins that whisper in our ears negative, terrible things about ourselves that are not true. This is just one of many things that we can do when we are suffering from chronic depression. Please seek help from a professional. I resisted that at first 
because I thought, okay, they're going to lock me up, right? You know, you think all these irrational things. If I tell them the things that I'm really thinking, they're going to lock me up. No, they recognized it, right? They recognize it immediately as depression. And they will give you exercises to do just similar to the one that I described that will really help pull you out. I'm also a big believer in medication. I, I've seen it work, a combination of therapy and medication. I've seen that work with members of my family. And so I would never resist that in the future if I really got to the point that I would need something like that. Please take care of yourself. You matter. And there are so many of us out here who have been in your shoes. Maybe not exactly. The details are obviously going to be different, but we've been to those lows before. And trust me, there is a great life ahead where you are going to pull out and feel better about yourself. I know this is difficult. I'm so sorry for those of you who are currently suffering. I also strongly believe that Jesus Christ knows exactly how you're feeling. And so you share that with him. Pray for guidance. Pray that you may find the right methods that are going to help you. You can do this. You can rise up. I've seen it happen in so many people's lives. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And it is my greatest desire for every one of you that you will be able to find hope and peace on your journey and be stronger because of it in the end. We'll see you here next time on The Pickled Sunflower. Oh, oh, oh.